I'm gonna start from the top. Okay. Hey My guys. Shirt's all bunched up. Sorry. Hey guys. But it's worth it. Sorry. Sorry. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Welcome back to Causeway Life. I'm Air Bear, and I managed to get Love Bug back. Hey. So today we are on step nine of the Cosplay 101 series, which is wearing your cosplay. So this part is pretty straightforward. If you've been following all eight steps, you are at the point where you just wear your cosplay and have some fun. However, poop does hit the fan, and there are some problems that may occur during your cosplaying. Also, there's some things that you might want to be aware of when you're cosplaying. So we're going to go over those things in this video. So. Anytime you're cosplaying, one thing you want to make sure that you always have is your emergency bag. It'll save your life one day. Be like, what? You trying to fall off of me? So these are the sorts of things that we usually have in our emergency bag. So hygiene items that we usually carry are hand sanitizer and deodorant. And as far as first aid items, you always want to make sure that you have water, headache medicine, band-aids. So if you're wearing contacts during your cosplay, be sure to have your carrying case and your solution. The adhesives that we usually carry in our cosplay emergency bag are gaff tape or duct tape, super glue, and if you have room for a hot glue gun and some hot glue sticks. And you want to make sure that you have sewing equipment. So small scissors, some yarn or thread, and safety pins. If you're wearing makeup, and you should, I highly suggest it. Makeup will make up your cosplay. Uh, make sure that you bring your extra body paint and a sponge to put it on with. Also bring extra lipstick, a mirror, <laughs> and spirit gum or whatever glue that you're using if you have something sticking to you. I use spirit gum because I'm allergic to latex. And if you're going to a con, some things to remember are your phone charger. Yes. Get to the charger! Yes. Or a portable charger, like when you can walk around and charge your phone with. Those are pretty cool because... You're not that person stuck on the wall. Exactly. Wet wipes, napkins, and tissues. Things like that. So now that we've talked about things to have in your emergency bag, let's talk about some specific problems that we've had and how we even uh, overcome them. For instance, oh no, my armor just fell off. See if you can duct tape yourself or gaffer tape yourself back into your armor. If you have something like an elastic or a Velcro that fell off of your armor or whatever, see if you can safety pin it back on. Love Bug did that for me while I was at Dragon Con because my elastic just ripped off. Also, you may be able to create your own closure, especially with paper clips, because every place that has a desk has paper clips. So you can try to fashion something together using paper clips. Yeah, just MacGyver it. You'll be very proud of yourself. Or shame. Another issue. Oh snap, I'm not finished! So, if you didn't have time to finish your cosplay, see if you can hot glue it onto yourself. Or duct tape. Or duct tape it onto yourself. I have some experience with that. Also, if you didn't have time to finish painting it the way that you wanted it painted, see if you can battle damage it. Or if you didn't have time to finish a piece of it, see if you can throw an accessory on it, like a jacket or a cape or a scarf. And duct tape can be your friend. I once made a whole prop out of duct tape on the train ride to Dragon Con. Insert picture. I don't know if we have a, well, we don't have a close up picture of that. We have pictures. It wasn't my finest moment. <laughs> and how about this problem? Oh no! My shoes feel like they're filled with thousands of baby rancors! So if your shoes are uncomfortable, why have any a bandage on the back of your ankle? If, sorry, there's a lint. If that's the part that feels uncomfortable. You have a story about bandages. I do have a story about bandages. So there's an awesome YouTuber that had this great suggestion. I'll give it to you right now. <laughs> you want to try again so I don't have to piece that together? You didn't have to piece like, that together. Just let it ride. I have to piece S it together. Why are you okay. trying to block me out of your hair? <laughs> Shh. So, so an awesome suggestion about band-aids. We actually got this from a, another YouTuber. Go grab your wallet, grab some band-aids, and stick those band-aids in your wallet. I mean seriously, stop what you're doing right now, go do that. Because it will 
possibly literally save your life one day. It's awesome. Well, metaphorically. Or you can be that friend who always has band-aids. Everybody loves that friend. Trust me. Because it's me. Also, if your shoes are uncomfortable, remember that you can always just take a break. Have a seat somewhere, rub your feet, let your shoes hang out. So, now that we... <laughs> So we talked about emergency bags and we talked about solving problems. Now we're going to talk about some things that you need to be aware of before you cosplay. Now this next part is going to be pretty specific to when you're going to cons, only because cons are a little different. I mean, when you're cosplaying and going to the movies or cosplaying and just going to hang out, you pretty much know what to expect. But going to cons can be a whole new world. So even though a lot of these things pertain to cons, it still can pertain to just wearing cosplays in general. Let's get into some things that you need to be aware of while you're cosplaying. When you're cosplaying, something that may happen a lot is you'll get a lot of looks and stares, especially from people who don't really get it. Anime teaches us that when something's different, the whole world is against you. <laughs> <laughs> People aren't gonna chase you around with pitchforks <laughs> and try to burn your stakes. You'll ruffle some feathers. Yeah, you may ruffle some feathers. Yeah. You may or may not, especially like if you go on public, public transportation. transportation, you're gonna encounter some people who just don't get it and they get very upset that they don't get it. I have a more negative view of the world, so I tend to think that people get more upset. He has a more positive view of the world and he's just like, eh, well, they're just funny. And I don't find it very funny. That's gonna be the minority of the people that you run into. Yeah, it is definitely a minority. It's, it's, but when it does happen, it is kind of annoying. You'll get a lot more just stares and people laughing or smiling. You'll, you'll brighten up a lot of people's days. So we suggest cosplaying with a friend or putting on some headphones and just going to your happy place. And lastly, I mean, if somebody's trying to throw shade, someone's just trying to throw shade. <laughs> <laughs> trying to throw shade, you know what I'm saying? Cause you don't bleep, you know? They, they just over there being a thigh, you know what I'm saying? Just do you. Do you know what most of those words mean? Yeah, I have a nephew. Is he your real nephew? Yeah, or is it he nephew? Is my real Yo, nephew? Nephew. Because <laughs> if somebody is just persistently trying to throw shade, just be confident in what you're doing. Yeah, a lot of times when people I ask me about certain things, sometimes I feel like I have to apologize for it, especially my explanation. Kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's this thing, it's cosplaying, it's kind of what nerds do. And you don't have to do that. Like, you just be proud and confident in what you're doing because cosplayers are artists and they're talented and they're bold and they're incredibly nerdy people, which is excellent and great and a wonderful thing to be. Mm -hmm. So I need to take my own advice and just be proud to be a cosplayer. And don't apologize or feel like you have to apologize for dressing up. Cosplayer and proud. It's an X-Men reference. It is. Because we get down with X-Men. J-Law. Also her. Something else that happens when you're cosplaying is you're going to be asked to take pictures a lot. Especially if you're a Disney character or well-recognized character. Like they go bananas yeah. when yeah, you're that's dressed true. up as a Disney character. Like when we were Princess Jasmine and Aladdin, we would walk like maybe five feet and get stopped for a picture. And then walk five more feet, stop for a picture, try to take a bite. Oh, can I get your picture? It was tiring, but it was really cool. Cause it was, awesome. it was like- Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was people showing their appreciation of our costume and just, but it happens. It does, it does. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Be prepared. Parents are going to ask you to take pictures with their kids. And a lot of times those kids are not going to want to be in those pictures. You don't have to say yes. You can always just say I have somewhere to go. That's a pretty good excuse. Yeah, I take it as a compliment. I usually take the picture unless like I have to get somewhere. Because <laughs> right. the Little Mermaid definitely did turn down a room full of children. Also, when dealing with children, don't let them touch your cosplay. Because if they do, they may pop a rhinestone off of your Princess Jasmine belt. And then you will walk away very sad because a piece of your costume got ripped off. True story. I got molested by a kid. She was trying to touch my Princess Jasmine top, which of course is right over my boob. And so she was touching it. I was like, okay, where is your guardian? <laughs> oh, she's right there laughing. Oh, wonderful. 
wonderful. This is why I love kids. And lastly, be aware that you are going to get tired. It's pretty exhausting wearing a costume because you constantly have to make sure that all your pieces are okay and that they're not getting sucked into something or someone's not stepping on something. It sometimes can be complicated to move. You're gonna get tired, like even if you're not going to a con. If you're just going to the movies, it's tiring. Cause like when I was Sif Leia, I had to constantly make sure that no one was gonna step on the tail of my skirt, which I did in him, which was my bad. It's tiring wearing a costume. Yeah. And it's okay. Take a break. Take a break. Take a break, take a break, take a break. On me. Addiction. Now there are some additional things to look out for after you cosplay. I almost went out of screen on that. First of all, cosplay addiction. After you cosplay, you will be addicted and you will try to cosplay to every single thing. And you will try to make up events to cosplay to. It's okay. If yeah. you need some ideas of places to cosplay to, leave it in the suggestion box. Yeah. And maybe I can give you a suggestion or somebody else can give you a suggestion. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, after you cosplay, you run the risk of running into con depression. All good things have to come to an end. Also be, also, also beware of con crud. It can happen with cons and it can also happen with going to the movies. But after going to an event like that where you probably were tired because you were working on your cosplay, you probably didn't have as good hygiene as you should have had because you didn't want to wash the paint off your hands, or other people might not have had as good a hygiene as they should have had because they didn't want to take their gloves off. Or just whatever, being around a bunch of new people. Yeah. After that, you're coming in contact with a lot of germs. After a con, people have a tendency to get sick. The first Dragon Con for us, I got sick. I think you got a little sick too. Second Love Dragon that. Con, we were, uh, we were on it. We were mm -hmm. hand sanitizing, mm -hmm. washing our hands. Mm -hmm. doing Staying all away from that. those handrails. Yes. Just think about the things that get touched a lot just throughout normal life and multiply that by over 9,000. And uh, those handrails, those doorknobs, just remember to wash your hands or reach into your emergency bag and hand sanitize. And what I do with handrails, because I don't want to touch them, is I like place my elbow on them to kind of keep my balance if I have to do that. Like that's with escalators. It doesn't work okay. with stairs. Yeah, that's what I say. That's very dangerous. <laughs> with stairs. So, if we missed anything or we forgot something, leave it in the comment section below. Also, tell us about what your first cosplaying experience was like. If you like this video, be sure to let us know. Hit the like button and let your friends know. Share it. The next video, next and last video in the Cosplaying 101 series is step 10 which is storing your cosplay. So if you want to receive a notification when that video comes out, make sure you hit subscribe. Also, if you just like this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Or I will see you next time, I don't know. She'll be back in a flash. <laughs>